It is most difficult for me to think about what's going on here when I sit down to write back to the United States. Something about the virtual portal into luxury. I don't know if many of the children here have ever existed without tank shell holes in their walls and the towers of an occupying army surveying them constantly from the near horizons. I think, although I'm not entirely sure, that even the smallest of these children understand that life is not like this everywhere. It was uh, a Sunday um, afternoon in Charlotte, about noon actually, and I received a phone call and my uh, son-in-law, Kelly, was on the phone and um, he asked if Craig was there. And something about the way he asked made me realize, I, I felt right away that something was wrong. And, and then I asked, why Kelly? And he hesitated for a minute and he said, we've had some very sad news. And then my daughter, Sarah, I could hear her in the background. And she got on the telephone and she said, mom, it's Rachel. And I, I think the first words out of my mouth then were, is she dead? We were um, opposing the demolition of farmland and other property, uh, Palestinian property by Israeli destruction forces and soldiers. The bulldozer drove up and it kept going and she tried to move back but she couldn't move back and she got caught underneath. She got caught underneath the bulldozer. Many other internationals began to surround the bulldozer and yell at it and tell it that there's somebody there and it did not stop. Where Rachel was killed, she was protecting a doctor's home. And that's important to realize that in the three children and his wife, she knew that family and, and, and that doctor felt that Rachel was like a, a daughter to him. He bought that house, it was in the middle of a the neighborhood. There were other rows of houses between his house and the border. Those other homes, those other streets were all destroyed and now it was his turn. Uh, and I've had people say, well, she was in a war zone. And Cindy points out that war zone is people's, it is people's neighborhoods. That, those are children. I'm here for other children. I'm here because I care. I'm here because children everywhere are suffering and because 40,000 people die each day from hunger. I'm here because those people are mostly children. We have got to understand that the poor are all around us and we're ignoring them. We have got to understand that these deaths are preventable. We have got to understand that people in third world countries think and care and smile and cry just like us. We have got to understand that they are us. We are them. My dream is to stop hunger by the year 2000. My dream is to give the poor a chance. My dream is to save the 40,000 people who die each day. My dream can and will come true if we all look into the future and see the light that shines there. As Israel completed its withdrawal from Gaza, the following day it issued orders to confiscate additional Palestinian land from the West Bank and continue the construction of a separation wall. This wall is twice the height of the Berlin Wall and four times longer. It rips through villages, severing travel for work, health care, and education separating farmers from their lands and families from loved ones. An Israeli study revealed that the barrier's route was chosen in order to confiscate land intended for illegal settlement expansion, not for security reasons. 
here you have this huge wall being constructed right in the middle of the, of the West Bank. How can anybody believe that there's going to be the creation of a real state? It's a symbol and a reality of oppression. Anybody outside of Israel who supports a two-state solution has to be very careful because what they mean in two-state solution is that 90% of historical Palestine would be Israel. In the rest 10% you'll have two huge prison camps, one in the Gaza Strip and one in the West Bank. The people who uh, fought in the war were also the people who wrote the history books of the war. And they already had the story that they uh, made up about what had really happened. And that story was integrated in the Israeli educational system. It was integrated in the media and the political discourse. Some of us who work as Jewish educators have been admitting over the last maybe 10 years that it is propaganda. Israelis don't understand what's going on. They don't know the occupation. We began to educate ourselves. And the first thing we did was invite women, Palestinian women, to come into our homes and talk to us and tell us what exactly was the problem as they saw it. And little by little, we learned about their lives. We learned about the suffering they encountered on a daily basis. We learned about the killing going on there, about the lives that were completely circumscribed by an occupation that they had no control over. I'm one of the few Israelis not in uniform and not a settler that's been in the territories in the last nine months. You just see that, that the army was actually waging a very cruel war. On the Israeli side, there seems to be no understanding that this is how you create terrorism. If you are so repressive on a people, you give them uh, the sense of having no options, and that's a very dangerous place. In fact, there's a very clear correlation between the kind of human rights abuses that Israel commits in the West Bank and Gaza and the Palestinian militant response to those abuses. Most Israelis have very clear views, this is a very political country. And when you talk to somebody, you can argue all night, and you can go red in the face, or blue in the face, or whatever color, you won't get anywhere. But when somebody says, I refuse to do this, this is wrong for me, for us, for our country, this is immoral, and I'll go to prison rather than do it, and one guy does it, five guys, and 50, and 100.